Would you like some help to keep a more consistent size of your characters in your animations? Well today I'll be demonstrating the Shift and Trace feature in OpenTunes alongside two other simpler techniques. Hello ladies and gents and welcome to a look at the Shift and Trace feature of OpenTunes as I compare it to the Trace and Shift and Copy and Paste techniques to use a drawing you've already drawn as a basis for the next one. This helps to keep consistency in the size and volume of your characters. It's also useful when drawing part of a drawing that doesn't move, like copying a pattern on clothes or a tattoo when a body part moves for example. So the first way to use a drawing to make the next one consistent is to simply copy and paste it. Now as with all three methods you can use this on a full drawing or just part of it. So you might use it to copy just the head of a stick man for instance and then hand draw the rest of the body. So if we just take the select tool and then choose the freehand option and we draw around the head and the body and then we'll copy that, go to the next frame and paste that in. We'll just erase off the parts we don't want. So the extra part here of the arm and near the shoulder. Okay. So if we turn onion skin on, and then again take the select tool, and we can rotate that, and move him to the position that we want to be in, and then simply draw the rest. Okay, good. So this works fine in some circumstances, but the final output can be quite stiff, so you need to pick and choose the right time to use it. Now this works fine for a stickman animation because the head is a solid object and doesn't move and it also helps to keep the right size for the length of the body. But for flexible objects you really need something that adds a bit more life so trace and shift might be more suitable. And like copy and paste this is used when the drawing doesn't change at all or doesn't change much and you have nothing in the way of the previous drawing but you don't want to just copy and paste it or it'll feel too stiff. So by using trace and shift you put a bit of life into the animation. Simply put, you just trace over the lines and then move the copied version of those lines. And because you've traced them instead of copying them, there will be some slight movement in the line so they won't look as stiff and it does add a little bit of life to them. So let's just do that. And again it's just the head and body that I want to copy. And if you look between the two frames, without the onion skin, and you'll see that the head and body do move slightly and do differ slightly from each other. So that's where the life comes in. So let's put that back on and now what we need to do is to highlight it and then move the copied version again. There we go and now we'll just finish off the stick man. Okay so let's take a quick look at that. So he's standing still, he bends down and he jumps up. So the first two techniques can be applied in any software but the third technique is software dependent. Some animation software has it and some doesn't and this is Shift and Trace. Now the term Shift and Trace comes from the old days of animation where they used to draw on paper. Where they'd literally shift one piece of paper that's got a drawing on it underneath another and then trace over the top in a new location. And this is used when you want to draw between two drawings that are quite far away from each other on the screen or when something else is in the way so you want to move one of the drawings closer to the other to trace over it at the final output location. And it's important to remember that Shift and Trace only shows one drawing directly before the current frame and one drawing after the current frame. So let me show you what I mean with a single drawing first. So if we go to drawing frame number 4 and we want to see drawing number 3 but move to the new position, what we need to do is use the four commands in the view menu for Shift and Trace here. And you press the first button and it shows the previous drawing, number 3. Now because all the Shift and Trace commands are in the menu it can be quite tricky to go to to select them so the best thing to do is to move them as buttons onto the toolbar. And you can do this simply by right clicking on the toolbar and choose Customize X Sheet Toolbar. And then it shows you all the commands that are currently on the toolbar on the left hand side and on the right hand side are all the commands you can put into there. So we know that these four Shift and Trace commands are in the view menu so we open that up. And all we need to do is find them in here and put them onto the left.
And at the very bottom of the possible items, we've also got a separator. So we'll drop one of those in there as well. Separate the four shift and trace items. Okay, so I'll leave them in that order. Press OK. And you'll see them appear at the bottom here. So the first button turns on and off shift and trace. Now there's a peculiar thing with shift and trace, which I think is a bug, that if you're on a blank frame, it doesn't show the previous frame, so here it's not showing frame 3, it's showing frame 2. And the only way you can get it to show you frame 3 is by making a mark on the page. So if I just draw a line there, you'll notice that immediately it now shows drawing number 3 beforehand. And that's just one of the few quirks about using shift and trace, so you just need to be aware of which frame was being shown at the time. Okay, so now it's turned on, we can press Edit Shift, and that allows us to move a temporary copy of drawing number 3 to anywhere we like on the screen. And you do that by simply clicking anywhere within the square and moving it around. If you go near one of the corners and move to the outside, you see the icon change, and you can click and drag and rotate the drawing. And that's currently being rotated at this centre point of the drawing. And you can move that by placing your cursor over the circle and just dragging it to a position on the drawing. And then when you go to rotate, it rotates about that point. OK, so we'll move the drawing up here as this character is jumping in the air. And then we turn off Edit Shift and then we can just start drawing. So now we're drawing directly onto frame 4. And it's just the same as the previous technique of doing a trace over the lines that you want. And then redrawing any lines that are going to be different. And then we'll just erase this extra line we put on at the beginning. And while you're drawing, you can also press the button that says no shift, which temporarily hides the drawing you're tracing over, and you just keep pressing that on and off as you add to the drawing. And then when you're finished, simply press reset shift, and everything goes back to where it was before, and then turn off shift and trace. So there's drawing number four done. Okay, so let's use shift and trace to draw an in-between drawing. And we'll also take a quick look at the path feature that's built in. So we're on frame four, so that's selected. So if I press the insert key, that'll move frame four to frame five. It'll leave me a blank space here to draw on. So if I turn shift and trace on, you'll see the issue we had before, but it's currently showing drawing number two and not three or four. But if we just draw a mark on the page, you'll see it's now added a new drawing in the middle on frame 4 and we can see frame 3 down here of the stickman just about to jump off the ground and then frame 5 with the stickman in the air. So now we want to draw in between. So we've got a choice of which drawing we want to trace from, either the one on frame 3 or frame 5. Now to save confusion, the first thing I'll do is I'll make the drawing numbers match the frame numbers rather than drawing number 5 under frame 4 We'll make it drawing 4 under frame 4 and drawing 5 under frame 5. So you simply click and drag along the drawings, right click and choose auto renumber. Good, so now we're looking at frame 4 and drawing 4. So if we press edit shift, that's now turned on. And we can move either one of these two drawings ready for tracing over. And if you click and drag anywhere in the white space, it'll choose which drawing to move first. Usually it does move the drawing before, so that's drawing number three, but sometimes it moves the drawing after. So again, be aware which drawing is being moved. And you can choose to move either drawing or even both drawings by clicking on any of the lines in the drawing itself. So there's drawing number five, and there's drawing number three. So I'll leave five where it is, and I'm, I'll try and leave five where it is, <laughs> And we'll move number three roughly to the centre where we'd like him. We'll add a little bit of rotation. And then move him roughly in between where I'd like to get him. And then again, we we'll turn off the edit shift and we can just start drawing. And this is going on drawing number four. Okay, there we go. So we'll reset that and then turn off shift and trace. So there's drawing three, four and five. And I'll just get rid of this line here. Okay, so there's an alternative for drawing in between. I'm not just guessing where you'd like the in-between drawing. 
and that's the path feature of Shift and Trace. So I'll just add another blank frame before frame 5. And again, I'll make a small mark on the page, just so we've got a frame in place. And then I'll renumber them so that drawing 6 is on frame 6, 5 is a blank frame, and 4 is the previous. We'll turn Shift and Trace on. And then instead of just editing and moving the position of the drawings, if you hold the control key and draw from one point in one drawing, drawing number four, to a matching point in drawing number six, like this, it draws a line between the two and then let go. And this is where it gets a little bit confusing. So this allows you to give a path of action between the two drawings. And you can click and drag the center point of where you want to draw your new frame. You can drag it outwards to make an arc and it'll rotate the drawings. And you can adjust them by rotating and dragging individual drawings as we did before and then trace over them. Now I've not found a use for this myself yet because adjusting the line works in a very peculiar way as it moves and rotates each of the characters. But if you decide to use this, then feel free and go ahead. And simply turn off Edit Shift again, and then start drawing to trace over your character in the right position. Then reset Shift and turn it off. And then we'll erase this spare line again. Okay. So go ahead, give it a go, and find the best method that works for you. And if you like this video, please like and share to help the channel, and comment below if you have any questions or requests for other tutorials. I've got more OpenTunes tutorials on this channel, why not take a look around now you've found me, and see what else could be useful for you. And if you're new to the channel, I'd love to have you subscribe, to be reminded of future tutorials and animations. And I'll be back next Friday with another video. And that's a guarantee. Thank you.